Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage in our Barcelona studios of theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante. We're extracting the signal from the noise. Dave, 14 years of theCUBE, Barcelona, big set here. Mobile World Congress is now called MWC, a lot of action. And the biggest topic that's being discussed obviously is AI, but connectivity. And one of the big topics around connectivity is what's going on at the edge, AI at the edge, cloud to edge. Our next guest, Jeff Sharp, Senior Director, Edge AI Solutions at Supermicro. Welcome awesome. to theCUBE. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to theCUBE. It's great, great, being here. Great, it's great you, getting out of the aisles where all these <laughs> thousands of people are. So Jeff, yeah. great to have you on. So first of all, a lot of people know Supermicro because they make great boxes, servers, um, but you're in the edge group. You're in the product side. You're dealing with as, as the edge comes out because we're in a telecom show. It's about the devices at the edge of the network, whether it's factories, intelligent edge, or retail. There's a lot of action going on, especially around architecture. I got to put devices there, how's the AI going to work? So every company is working on, what do I do at the edge? Right. That's what you're doing. So tell us, what we're doing. what's going on at the edge and what's Cycro, Super Micro's angle on what you guys are doing there? Well, the key is, is, is it's not just about the edge, it's edge to cloud, right? And it's everything in between. But what we're seeing is, is from a customer's perspective, Edge is where a lot of the value is coming from, right? That's where the customer's experience is coming in. That's where they're engaging th things like avatars and wayfinding and from airports to retail stores to security. Uh, the cloud, it, it has its purpose, but the edge has its purpose as well. And from a super micro perspective, uh, the key is, is, is how do we put more workloads on a device? How do we use AI as a a generative engine for not just LLM, generative and predictive AI, but how can we use that hardware and our core partners to make yeah. it happen at the edge? Yeah, one of the things that we've been covering, obviously we've been following the AI side of it, the computing power and, and uh, training and inference compute needs, GPU, et cetera, is coming down to the devices. You look at the Llama models, um, the performance is getting better on whether it's a PC or a device. Right. Now certainly on the higher end you need multiple GPUs, thousands of servers and a cluster, there's GPU clouds for that. What does the AI look like at the edge for you guys? What are you seeing from customers and, and developers around what they're thinking? What are they deploying? How are they experimenting with AI at the edge? What are some things, could you share uh, some use cases of what's experimenting? Because experiments are going to turn into production. Right. So one of the key things is, is number one, cost, right? So if you think of the edge, what you want to make sure is, is that you're not deploying something that the customer can't afford, because it's then exponentially multiplied out into the industry. Uh, the other key is, is a lot of these applications, you know, a lot of people are seeing AI, but they truly don't understand the, 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 the revolution of AI, the, where it's heading and, and what's the functions of it. They hear chat GPD and all that. But for the edge, it's, it, the key part is, is delivering something from Supermicro that's cost effective, but also it's powerful enough to do uh, not what they want today, but also what they want tomorrow. They don't have to replace hardware constantly. So we try to build these bigger uh, workloads and work models. So for instance, think of a grocery store, walking into a grocery store, right? We all experience the self-checkout. You know, you go in and you look at an apple, is this a Fuji, Macintosh, you know, what, what, Gala, what kind of Apple is this? But you know, grocery stores are starting to move to computer vision, right? They say, okay, they've, they've already pre-trained the model, they know what a Gala Apple looks like versus a Macintosh, and you put that under a camera and boom, there it is. So the quality of experience is there, but the quality of experience could be worse when it says it, it's a Fuji Apple, right? And it's, no, oh, I, hey, I need some help over here. So we're trying to do better in regards to that human machine interface and being to provide those analytics up into the cloud to continue to train, to continue to learn. It's like our kids, right? Yeah, so yeah. our kids, you know, have you ever had a kid that drives a car for the first time? You know, we're sweating, we're freaking out. Same yeah. thing with AI, you got to train, you got to do all these different models. And, and it takes time. It takes <laughs> time, exactly. It needs some supervision. Need supervision, And then they'd right? be unsupervised. Exactly, red Not means stop, <laughs> green means go. Machine but. learning, Dave. Supervised <laughs> machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so you guys consume a lot of, obviously, pr processors. We were just talking earlier about the, we, XPUs, the NPUs, the CPUs, the... NPUs, uh, there's the, a PU for NPUs, everything now. Right, <laughs> it's called XPUs. XPUs. Accelerators, all exactly. kinds of... Exactly. So, so, what does the edge look like? It's not just a general purpose 
x86 that you throw over the wall and say, hey, name it, you know, edge class server right, or whatever. Right. It's, it's different, it's specialized. Can you explain, kind of take us inside and, and paint a picture of, of, of what the capability looks like? Absolutely, so we're taking the approach, so Supermicro has a building block model which works really well for us. We have common elements that we build chassis around based on the environment that it's going to go into. So what we do is, is we, we look at, so we have so many SKUs, oh my God, we have a billion SKUs out there. And what we do in the edge is we, we take a subset of that SKUs and look at it from a t-shirt size. I'm a small, you could tell, right? So we go from small all the <laughs> way to extra both. large. <laughs> and, and each of those are not just the physical size, but it's the capabilities of that. It's like you were saying, the XPU. How many GPUs can I put in the system? How many MPUs can I put in? What's the smart NIC? What's the, the broadband connection that is required for this edge system? So we work very closely with our customers to try to figure out that, and also, it's not going to go into, a lot of times, in a nice, sterile data center room. It's going to go in a convenience store next to the toilet paper, right? It's going to be next to the bathroom where the mops are. So we build these systems that are hardened, that has the ability to manage those. Restaurants, great, great example. Think of a kitchen, steam, particulates in the air. They need a, need a fanless product versus a high-end, big rack mount server. So we work very closely with the customers with that t-shirt size mentality, and then think of, okay, here's your workloads, but what are your workloads in the future? And we build that system around it so they don't rip and replace. So, <clears throat> talk about some of the use cases. A couple of years ago I wrote a piece, this is before ChatGPT, and we, says, we said, we had this slide in there, as AI matures, inference is going to dominate at the edge. So we try to come up with all these examples. We had autonomous driving in there, traffic optimization, AR power grid, new payment systems, retail, onshore manufacturing, machine diagnosis, smart factories, all we were just all kinda, the buzzwords. We right? were just kind of spitballing, <laughs> right? Bingo. And then, and then, but the funny thing is, is we had like the crossover point is 2025. Actually, it's not not bad. It's now, and yeah. then inference yeah. kind of takes over. Keep research, <laughs> right again, Dave. Well, it's like Put another one this up. was really yeah. one of those, you know conceptual diagrams. Right. So, you tend to get the research so, right so, all the yeah. time. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> Dave's make, humble. Make it real for us. Like, what, is, what are people actually doing? Where's the, where's the money? Where's the money? Mm -hmm. So, so the, the different market, we take a, a vertical approach to everything, right? So, we have content experts, industrial experts in each of these industries. And some examples would be, we'll take Enterprise Edge as a great example. So, businesses, they hear the chat GP, I can ask a command and a, a beautiful PowerPoint pops out. Uh, I look at things such as security around that. How do I make sure that that inferencing model is secure because you're pulling from pre-trained models to the edge? How do I make sure there's zero trust to those attachments? Uh, retail stores, uh, C stores and quick serve stores, making sure that I'm running multiple use cases, whether it's a digital concierge, a kiosk, how do I order? But instead of touching it, maybe I'm talking to an avatar or futures holograms, right? You're seeing these spinning LED wheels with holograms. I'm now speaking to a, a fake person, but it looks real. Um, we're also seeing things like AR, VR introduction uh, into stores and home use. And with all that, that needs inferencing, that needs high speed, edge, low latency, 10 milliseconds or less technologies, and all these different use cases, the end customer wants a common workflow. How do I pull in computer vision? How do I pull in digital concierge avatars? How do I pull in uh, an, an interactive kiosk that's doing uh, conversational AI? Uh, we want to do that in containers, and how do I manage those containers remotely? That's the challenge that our customers see is they're looking at Supermicro and our partners, is how do I deploy this, right? I don't have an IT guy in every one of my stores. How do I, how do I manage this remotely? And how do I do it with a single pane of glass? So we're working with core software partners that can enable that. And with all of our silicon partners, NVIDIA and Intel and AMD and Ampere Arm, you know, we're working with all of them and trying to enhance the, that experience of not just the consumer or the user to that machine, but also the support to that machine as well. 
and talking to carriers here at Mobile World Congress, you know, the carriers want to make money on this, right? They want to have the ability of, you know, they see that gleaming AI object out there, but how do I make money? And how do I manage that to, to provide the best quality of service? You know, the retail angle is interesting. You mentioned um, deploying and not having IT staff. That's the norm, so AI is going to help there. The other area that AI I'd like to get your thoughts on is, how do you make that retail outlook? Because it could be big store, a small store. Again, no one's, no IT, you're not racking the stacking. The devices are going to be smaller. They have to be more agile and, 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 and deal with the fixed physical footprint. Right, right. So, one of the things that people are talking about, and we've been reporting it, is that personalization is going to be a big part of AI. So, if I got a store, I want to personalize that for the right workloads and workflows and data that I need for my system. Right. If I'm on an airplane, I'm going to need to have the connectivity come into my first class module. Exactly. Or, um, which we were talking to Boeing last night about, they love that stuff. So, so you're going to start to see this edge become very intelligent, but also be its own data Personal. center. Yep, be its own data center. It's got, right. So it's going to get smaller, faster, cheaper, but the performance is going to increase. We heard Charlie Quas from Broadcom talking about as the silicon gets better, lower power, more scale, more action. Exactly. So what do you see for this personalization? What are some of the, are there early signs of it? Is, is the toe in the water? Are people just kind of just, just trying to figure out how to like make it work right now? <laughs> like, are we too far in the future? No, I, I think we're, we're still, if you think of yeah. the curve, right? Yeah. The hockey yeah. stick curve <laughs> yeah. of AI. We're still at the bottom of, of intelligence and where we want to go. It hasn't it, kicked up it's yet. It's kicking up. And one of the reasons of it kicking up and to accelerate that is for humans to be more, uh, not scared to death of this thing, right? Personalization, all, all of a sudden people are thinking, oh my God, they know that's Jeff Sharp and all my background and all the parties I went to back in my uh, in college and all that stuff. I didn't so. have Instagram when I was in college, or YouTube, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have no social like footprint. I have no uh, yeah, digital like footprint. We have no digital <laughs> footprint, thank God. But, but the core is, <laughs> it's, it's all about that experience, and, and companies and the retail are looking to differentiate themselves. You know, think of all the, the convenience stores, C-stores that are out there, fast food restaurants. Yeah. They want a technology that a consumer feels confident with, they're used to and they want to be able to differentiate from C store A to C store B. Things such as I pull into to get gas. Bucky's, great, great yeah. example, Bucky's. 300 pumps. You know, have you ever heard of Bucky's? No. It's a monster C store based in Texas that's now moving to the East Coast of the US. And I pull into the gas stop, it does license plate recognition, it knows that Jeff Sharp is a Bucky's preferred customer. Before I even get up to the pump, the pump has a display. Hi, Jeff, you have a big monster truck, diesel. Yeah. Uh, we'll go you got a message pump. in your inbox, you want to play it now. <laughs> and, yeah. and do you want to order something, you know, while you're pumping gas, do you want to order your favorite hot dog with cheese, chili, and all that? And we'll go ahead and prepare that order. Yes or no? Yeah, sure, I'll do that while I'm pumping. I go in, my hot dog's ready. And, oh, by the way, we're offering a great discount on your favorite beer or soda and we'll go ahead and do that. And it's all personalized for Jeff Sharp. Airport, same way, you get off your plane in a foreign country. How do we, uh, how do we deal with the next gate I need to get to? And instead of looking for the screens, maybe it is a, a digital avatar, maybe it is something on my phone that I'm interacting with at the edge. So I love that Bucky's example. So just trying to think about the sort of anatomy of where Supermicro plays. Bucky says a data center somewhere. I'm sure you got some equipment in there. Maybe they're using the cloud. But it's all at the edge, by the way. So yeah, okay. But so, but somewhere that data is going back, right? I presume. Exactly. Okay. So that's right. But in real time, I got Bucky's 300 pumps, and so you play there. You're you're all over that. Now, is there a spectrum to that edge? You know, you got kind of a a a, a big machine, maybe <laughs> coordinating things, and you got stuff on the pump and. Where do you play across that spectrum? And how do you think about the sort of near edge and far edge? Even within the Bucky's, there's like a near edge and right, far edge. Right, right. So that's one of the key benefits of Supermicro, and I'm not doing a big Supermicro pitch here, but yeah, really what, what differentiates us is that we do have the equipment that goes in the gas pumps. We do have the equipment that goes into the, the backroom systems that are, are the size and shape and environmental conditions that it can work. 
and by the way, we're also in their cloud, right? Yeah, we're right. managing their entire data center with all of our hardware. So true edge to cloud from the NN use uh, device, compute device, to maybe an IoT gateway, to a storage, even we do routers, we do switches, all the way up to the data center. So we, we can help support that whole flow and because Supermicro, we get a lot of the silicon before anybody else, we actually uh, are really proud of our first to market and a lot of things, then we can work with Bucky's and say, oh, we got this new technology, let's do a proof of concept with your, maybe the lowest risk store you have or a brand new store, and let's test it out together. So we, we try to partner as much as we can with our customers. We don't want to just be a supplier we really want to partner with them, understand their, their wants and needs and their desires, and work really closely with them. And your SKUs, a billion SKUs. Oh my God. Uh, so, but those SKUs, like you might have a vision system to read the license plate, and that might have an ARM processor in it, I'm just kind of making this up, but then you've got a, you know, maybe it's a bigger server that's doing all the transactions, and I mean, it's a wide spectrum of capabilities. Like you said, you've got every piece of silicon under the sun that you've got visibility on, and it's, and it's all getting spread across the edge. It is. is and the, how do you size this market? <clears throat> you just put a big dollar <laughs> T on it? I mean, it's just. Uh, that would be the simple way. So what we've done is we've invested in a tremendous amount of manpower, uh, top talent, architects that, it's not just, realize also, it's not just about the great piece of hardware that's sitting there, think about Let's use a convenience store as another example. They want to put 50 cameras all around their store. They want to put cameras outside. Every gas pump's going to have a camera. Well, Supermicro, how many systems do I need to do that? What's the right GPU, CPU, NPU combination? Do I go high end, do I go low end? And it's not just the, the hardware capabilities, but the logical capabilities. How do we invest in future-proofing that system, but supporting it in today's mode. So we have a whole organization that supplies those services to say, okay, 50 cameras, 1080p, 4KP, 30 frames rate per second, blah, 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 blah. We now have the ability to funnel that into and say, you need this system, this is the perfect combination, and this is the cost, oh, you want to go down? Well, we, let's think about the, the traffic flow of this. Maybe we need to reduce the smart NIC. So we work very, very closely with our customers on not just the cost profile, but the needs profile it, as it, well. You mentioned GPU, everybody's of course crazy about it. NVIDIA, they want they can't, H100, can't wait to get H200, and I love it. But there's a lot of other GPUs. I got a GPU in here, uh -huh. I think I got a GPU in here. Right? All, all kinds of alternatives that are out there. Again, there are. full spectrum. There are. And um, that's why I'm interested in the size. I mean, I think it's really as somebody who used to and sometimes still sizes markets. It's hard to get your hands around this one. I think several years ago we, we took a stab at it, kind of top down, bottom up, and it's, it's almost incalculable how large it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally trillions. And it's growing like crazy. It's, it's not just your big you know, NVIDIA brands, Intel, Flex cards. You, know, you have others out there too, and it's growing. And each of those are, are carving out their niche. You have ones that are very specific in computer vision and they're trying to beat the big boys and they're trying to be very agile. Uh, the key to all those GPUs and MPUs is really the, the SDKs, the, the way that I train the models, the way that I um, and fear those models. There needs to be a very common subset. So we coach these startups in these areas that say, hey, you want to do this? Just realize customers don't want to go with a very purpose-built SDK, software development kit, or an inferencing model, they want to use a standard aspect of that. Jeff, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Last minute we have left, put a plug in for your group. Okay. Supercomputing, what are you guys working on? Uh, what are you looking to do? What's your goals? What are some things you're excited about? Great. Put well, the plug in. Well, thanks so much. So, uh, uh, our organization is, is heavily focused on the telecom industry, not just from a network element, but also the enterprise edge and their edge. How do we make telcos money? Um, we are very, very focused on that edge to cloud mentality with our team more on the edge, but how do we work with the cloud? Uh, working with our silicon providers, uh, with different NIC cards, GPUs, different form factors. We're trying to differentiate ourselves, not with just the broad scope of products we have, 
but the additional value that we provide to the market. Like I said, how many cameras, how many sensors, how many, you know, what is the infrastructure that attached? I need help doing that. <laughs> our customers don't know how to do that. So our organization does marketing, product delivery, product NPI, uh, we do business development, market development, all in an entity for the edge. All right, Jeff, thanks so much for hey, coming thank on theCUBE. you so much, man. All right, we're going to be, go time for lunch here at theCUBE. Dave, Dave Three of Ford lays a live coverage. My name's John Furrier with Dave Vellante, extracting the signals from the noise. We'll be right back with more live coverage after this short break. Mm -hmm.